Here we go, another episode of Ask the Lawyer. And our question this time is if you're a man and you think a divorce is coming, are you prepared? Is there anything you can do to prepare? I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com. My guest today is divorce and family law attorney Chaim Steinberger in New York City. Chaim, thank you for making some time for us today. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure to be with you and to share this information with your listenership. All right, so we're going to focus on, on men today, Chaim. Let's say uh, there's a man, he knows or he suspects divorce is coming. In you, is your advice, is there anything that he can do to prepare? What should he do first? Help us out. Well, before we get to what the man should do, I'd like to take a moment or two and talk about what, what other things he shouldn't do, because perhaps okay. too many people put themselves into trouble. And, and so you can't lie, cheat, or steal. You can't hide assets. You can't, we've got a wonderful legal system. It's not perfect by any means, but there are many of us in the legal system. We belong to bar associations. And we're constantly working and striving to improve the law. And generally, the system works well. All those horror stories you hear are about people who try to outsmart the system. They think they're going to game the system. And I liken it to taking a, if you're ever taking a tour of Big Ben, the clockworks on the inside, and you walk by, and the sleeve of your jacket gets caught in there, and the next thing you know, the gears pull you in and mash you up, and you come out of pulp. And you go, who cared? It was a silly little jacket. I would have taken off my jacket. But once you start playing with the system. So the people who try to game the system, outfox the system, I'm going to hide this. I'll transfer this to my brother and I'll give this to my second cousin once removed. You don't want to get caught in any of that. If you ever, if your wife's lawyer is going to have a lawyer like me, we are going to rip you to shreds. You don't even want to start to play that game. So you can't hide, you can't cheat, you can't steal. You can't transfer assets away. You can't do any of that. We're going to catch you, and you'll pay a heavy price, much worse than if you would have gone in straight. So, Because nobody likes to be manipulated. If a judge gets a sense that you're trying to play them, so you don't want to do that. Okay. So what can you do? Right. You, you can, however, prepare. And preparation goes on a whole lot of different levels. So let's talk about custody first. Question is, do you want to have... Joint custody, can you have shared custody with your spouse? Do you want to have sole custody? What are the negatives in your profile? If you're abusing alcohol or drugs or substances, get yourself cleaned up. Um, if, you're, if you have a problem with anger management, go see a therapist, figure out why. Something happened and the only way you know how to deal with adversity with somebody crossing you is you lash out, you get angry. I understand all of that. Let's get that taken care of so that by the time your case comes into court, it's like, Your Honor, this is a new man. He's a changed man. Five years ago, it was this and this. But today, Your Honor, he's a new man. So, so let's take care of the bad stuff. And then let's do some good stuff. So in any custody determination, and I'm here in New York City, mm -hmm. but anywhere around, I don't know of any state that has a different standard than the best interests of the child. The courts have to make a decision that's best for the child. So really the issue is, who is a better parent? Is it mom, is it dad? Now very often in intact families, fathers often are busy working, busting their butts to go and work and, 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 and earn money and support the family the way they should. And they neglect the children, they neglect the household chores. And then when they get divorced, mama comes into court and says, he's been absent, he doesn't know how to take care of the children. And to some extent it's true. And a lot of parent, fathers come to me that now that the family is disintegrated, now that they don't have a wife, they, they latch on, they want to hold on even more. It's more important to them now to have a good relationship to their child. And the, the, their wives come into court saying, your, your Honor, he doesn't even know how to take care of the child. So get yourself involved in your children's lives. Take on as many of the child rearing responsibilities as you can. Mm -hmm. you don't have to do it every day, but figure out, maybe you decide, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, you're going to wake the children up, give them breakfast, get them dressed, get them to school on time. You're involved with the children. Do homework if you can, in addition to everything else, in addition to the ball games, in addition to taking care. You want to establish a relationship. You want to establish a connection. Does it mean playing ball with your boys? Absolutely. But it also means listening to your girls and understanding them and being the sort of connected parent so that if it gets to, God forbid, if you have a custody battle and you have forensic evaluators and they figure out where each child is 
is drawn to and who has a stronger connection, the emotional connection, that your children say that they're very strongly connected to you. Right. Hopefully both you and mom are good parents and you can share custody. That's the healthiest for the children. You share custody, you both figure it out. That's the absolute best thing you can do. So you can start preparing for that by getting yourself more involved, by showing that you're a good parent. Don't wait until the divorce for you to say, hey, I want to change now. Sometimes judges are skeptical about right. that. And, and it's harder for the for the for your wife if you're getting divorced to to say oh well now I trust them build up trust. What about uh, the marital house, Chaim? What if uh, I mean obviously if there's a divorce, uh, many times there's going to be animosity. What if she says uh, while we're going through this, get out of my house, get out of the house. I don't want you living here anymore. Is there what what's your advice in that situation? So let, let me back up a second. First, let me deal with that animosity thing. And I think I you, knew you were going to say I, that. And I think you and I, Rob, have spoken before about the animosity. People can get divorced without being angry at each other. So I can be a great guy. She can be a great gal. We're not right for each other. Square peg, round hole. Nobody's at fault. We can get divorced. People are usually get angry. Why couldn't you be the person I wanted you to be? So to the extent that you can, you don't ever want to provoke. Don't do things to get your spouse angry. Don't let her get you angry. You're going. If you think you're going to move on in six months from now, God bless. If that's the choice you have to make, you get one merry-go-round ticket. That's fine. But you don't have to do it with a sense of anger or vindictiveness. The best thing you can do for you, for your children, and for her is to be able to sit down and say, look, this isn't working for me. It's probably not working for you, too. Because usually when it doesn't work for one, it doesn't work for the other either and say, okay, let's do this in a way that's best for each of us. Okay, there is something called nesting, where the, the children remain full-time in the house and the parents come in and out. That's really hard to do unless you have a really great relationship, because invariably somebody, it's hard to go shopping for a house when you're, when you're leaving. So if you're about to leave for a week or half a week to restock the refrigerator and put a new toilet paper and make sure there are eggs and milk in the fridge, that's a difficult thing to do. And invariably, somebody lets the toilet paper run out and, and it's no longer there and you grit your teeth and, and the whole thing blows up. If you can do that, it's the healthiest thing for the children. If you can share both the house and an apartment and you switch in and out, but that's really difficult. So if somebody's going to move out, there are many cases where, uh, uh, where the primary custodial parent gets to, to stay in the house because we don't want to uh, yank the children away from their friends, away from their home, away from their schools. And so, and often it's impossible to rent the place at the same rate as what you're paying to live there. So whoever gets custody along with custody gets the house. If mom gets custody of the children, then she'll, she'll remain in the house at least until the children turn 18 or 21, whatever it is. And, and so the general rule people often ask, She's asking me to move out of the house. Should I move out of the house? General lawyer's response is, don't move out. When you move out, you give something up, and and then it's hard to reclaim it. Having said that, and by the way, this is in New York City. There are tight live there. There are requirements for a court to order somebody to go out. But I know judges who look at the husband and say, get out. I I litigated a case where where the husband was was a primary parent, and the judge said. But what do you mean? She's the mother. Why isn't he out of the house? So, so these are the. But the most. So, so you have to know the law in your jurisdiction. And if you're not in New York, then find out what your law is and what it is in New York. You have to voluntarily move out, or you have to cause a danger. Whatever it is, and I feel comfortable saying this. And by the way, I guess I should say all the advice I'm giving is for educational purposes only. I'm not giving any specific sure. advice for your situation. You need a good, competent, skilled lawyer to help you guide you through. But. The most important thing, and probably in every jurisdiction, is do not cause a, a health hazard. Do not cause a scene. Do not give anybody a reason to go to the police and get orders of protection. If Don't ever lose your cool. Don't ever start screaming. We live today in a digital age. Everybody that's recorded, we see, we now see videos of police officers and other people and, and people at the counter. And you don't ever want to be... There, 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 there is an old adage running around, work like you don't need the money, dance like nobody's watching, and love like you've never been hurt before. Right. And now we're adding another one. 
text and an email as if you're going to have to read it in front of a judge in open court. So, and, and in today's day and age, we now have the, the video cameras and you now have baby, baby cams. And so assume you are always on camera, mm-hmm. assume everything you say is being recorded that may or may not be legal depending on which state and what the laws of your jurisdiction are. And imagine that it will always come out. So even though somebody may have yanked your chain for five hours before and then you move into a different room and then they start in again and you're really responding to what happened to the five hours before, that little video shot may only show those five minutes and it looks like you're, you are escalating something in a manner that isn't proportional to what happened. So remember, whatever happens, you have to keep your cool. If you're not going to be able to keep your cool, move out of the house. I'd rather see you in a different house than have you share, you know, central lockup and have to come down with bail money and get you out. If she starts something going on, it doesn't mean you have to be a fool. You don't want to respond in kind. When she starts screaming and yelling and throwing things, get up and move out. You want to file a police report, file a police report. You don't want to see, you don't want to stay part of that. You don't want to arrest her. The moment somebody files a in order of protection against the other, the case has now taken on a whole new dimension. It's become a lot more aggravated. And now every time you change, you know, where do we switch? Usually if you're good, we, you come to, to, to her house, you knock on the door, the kids come out, you take them away. If things are a little bit iffy, then curbside, you sit, sit at the street corner, you pull up, you say, I'm out here. She sends the kids out. In the situations where we have orders of protection, we have to make the switch at the police station at six o'clock at night. That's traumatic for the children. You don't want to do that. So make sure you never lose your cool. Um, I teach negotiation, mediation strategy, figure out how to how to calm tempers, figure out how to do this. Best thing to do is to listen, with even if you don't answer, listening itself and repeating back. It's called active listening or reflective listening. We'll have to do another segment on that. That will that reduces somebody's anger by 50%. So don't ever create a dangerous situation. Don't ever give her reason to call the police. Don't ever respond in a way that might get you arrested. Don't create a scene in front of the children. Don't use, don't put her down in front of the children because that's all bad. If you can keep your cool and stay in the house and, and play things out, let the lawyers play things out, it'll create... Men are the more brawny. Women are the more emotional of the species. Hopefully I can still say that today without getting getting myself into too much trouble. And so if you're feeling uncomfortable living in the house, she's feeling 10 times as uncomfortable. And so that creates, you're, you're playing a certain strategy. As Let, far as assets go, yes. If she, has, if she has money and you don't know where they are, to the extent you can accumulate accumulate documents and evidence. So if she has a building somewhere, to the extent you can, without creating too much, send your lawyer off off, um, off location. So you don't want to keep this at home. She finds it, she'll destroy it. You might want a copy of her bank account that shows that she has $300,000 in a bank account so that when it comes time for the divorce, she can't say, oh, I don't have any money. You might want to find out where her assets is, what she, what she owns, which businesses she's part of. You want to accumulate that. If you live in a jurisdiction, in New York, grounds for divorce don't affect the distribution of property. So if she's cheating, if you're cheating, doesn't make a difference in New York. Courts don't want to hear it. The, in some jurisdictions, and for an article I'm writing, I just ran across in community property jurisdictions, if you are unfaithful, you can use your right, you can lose your right to share in the appreciation of her separate property. If she's cheating on you, she forfeits her right hmm. in the appreciation of your community property. So, and, and they may take some jurisdictions. If it's your fault that the divorce happens, you may get penalized in the distribution of property. If it's her fault, she may get penalized. So you need to know which jurisdiction you are. In some jurisdictions, if she's been unfaithful, she can lose her right to alimony, to, to, to distribution of marital property. It can cost a lot of money. So to the extent you can, if you can accumulate evidence, but this requires you being smart, maybe you hire a private investigator, maybe you get evidence of her infidelity. And, and again, I'll argue that you should be able to do this with a, a even keel. You don't have to get angry, you don't have to get emotional, you don't have to start cursing and yelling. Just get the evidence, put it in your back pocket, give it to your lawyer, play it out. That can be very valuable in those jurisdictions 
where it is an issue. So you can start preparing. The other most important thing you can do is to be the supportive husband you should have been all along. Encourage her to become self-sufficient. Maybe she goes back, encourage her to get a job. Because the worst thing that can be is she comes into court, she says, Your Honor, he makes so much money, and he told me I have to stay home for the children, and now I don't have a career, now I can't do anything, he has to keep supporting me. How do you answer that, if that's true? Now, she may not, at this late stage of the game, she may not want to change. But if your children are six years and older, she can go out and get a job. Maybe you encourage her sort of subtly and nicely, and you let her get a job, start making money, re resurrect her career. The better off she is without you, the better off you are in the divorce action. So all of this makes sense from a personal developmental point of view, but it also makes smart strategy, strategic sense. So you can start preparing for the divorce by helping her get on her own two feet so that she's less um, reliant on your support. Chaim, lots of great information. I'm sure we could keep going. And uh, as usual, thank you for, for your wealth of knowledge and information and taking some time with us today. It's my pleasure. That's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been attorney Chaim Steinberger of New York City. If you want the best information about divorce or you're ready to choose a lawyer that lawyers choose, make sure to visit askthelawyers.com. Also, please take a second to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, by clicking on the button at the bottom of the screen. Thanks for watching. I'm Rob Rosenthal with askthelawyers.com.